Here we are looking at the sharp box score and this is going to be a totally different and unique way to study quickly advanced metrics, success rates, analytics, first down rates, things of that nature, explosive plays, uh, turnovers in a very organized manner very efficiently and get a very quick overview of it uh, in a given matchup after a given game has occurred. So. Let me walk you through it. Obviously, you can select the week and you can select the matchup that you want to uh, choose from. I'll show you a couple matchups just to see how they look. In the top right, we see the two teams that played, the final score, what the total was uh, in terms of the line on the game, as well as who was favored, who was the underdog. Um, you can look at it's organized by offense, so you see which team was on offense, you see their total yards, the number of plays that they had, their average yards per play their success play rate. So this is the amount of plays that they ran that were graded as successful. What is a successful play? A successful play basically is graded as a one or a zero. Either the play gains the required yardage, minimum yardage, to be considered successful based on down and distance to go. So if a play gained, let's use an example, six yards on first and 10, that would be graded as successful. However, if it was first and 20 following a penalty and it gained six yards, that would not be successful. Um, similar situation. If it's second and 10 and the play gains three yards, obviously that's not going to be graded as successful. If it's second and four and the play gains three yards, that would be graded as successful. So you can see that, and, and here's one final, um, one final example. Let's say a play gains its second and five and a play gains 20 yards that would be successful obviously if it is second and five and the play gains six yards that's going to be graded as successful too so it eliminates the surplus yardage uh, it doesn't include that in the metrics it also factors in how many yards you have to gain on a particular play so it's not going to credit somebody uh, who reels off on a third and 25 and they're just giving up and they're running the ball you know and they might gain 10 yards but obviously they're tackled well before the line of scrimmage it's not going to credit uh, those types of uh, garbage production uh, scenarios or situations it's looking primarily at whether or not this play was going to help you get the first down that you required to get so at any rate the coloring over here is what is associated with the successful play rate as you can see here, many of these plays were successful uh, uh, overall over the course of the entire game. When we get down here into like certain downs or field zones, that's when you're going to be able to see that plays were some of the plays were unsuccessful, particularly for the Redskins offense. I'll switch in a moment to another game, and you can see that these will change in coloring based upon you know the percentages here. And this game just happened to be somewhat successful overall, more particularly for the uh, for the Pittsburgh Steelers. You look at the first down rate as well, so the percentage of snaps offensively that generated a first down. Uh, obviously, the cumulative number of first downs. Yards away from touchdown on average, that metric basically looks at average field position over the course of the entire game. So if a team is rarely in their opponent's field zone, uh, if they're typically backed up, they can't get out of their own 50 or so, they're going to be over 50 yards on average away from the touchdown that they need to get to the end zone so they're far away from the end zone whereas if a team is getting turnovers if they're spending a lot of time in the opponent's territory if they're the team that's you know keeps backing up the opponent they're getting forcing the opponent to punt the ball and this offense then gets the ball around midfield and then they can get you know several first downs and eight plays or so in opponent's territory, then they're going to be you know less than 50 yards away on average from a touchdown. It looks at run rate and pass rate as you can see here. The steel, uh, the Washington Redskins obviously extremely pass heavy. This next quadrant is the passing quadrant. It's looking only at pass plays. You can filter them by shotgun or no shotgun. You can filter them for huddle or no huddle. So for example, if we look at the no huddle statistics, uh, it'll instantly populate these. And you can see that the Washington Redskins actually, when they ran no huddle, they did only seven snaps, but they were gaining 13.6 yards per play on average with a 71% success rate and 57% of their plays gained first down. This is far more successful than when the Steelers ran no huddle. But when the Redskins went too much slowdown and were huddling, 
Then their success rate dropped. They threw both interceptions in huddle situations and, uh, and not nearly as efficient overall. Um, now we go down here to the run plays. And again, we're just isolating out only run plays, uh, first down rate. All these statistics are the same. This column here for pass and rush, you could see whether or not they were getting explosive plays. Uh, obviously, explosive plays big in helping determining wins and losses, flipping field position, and that sort of thing. So uh, the both teams had an okay day uh, passing, but it was no contest overall. Nine explosive plays for the Redskins, sorry, for the Steelers, and only four for the Redskins. We look at interceptions and fumbles as well. I separate it with this beige uh, barrier here, and below this we talk about down report and field zone report. These are each driven by what these filters are selected. So if you want to select only pass plays or run plays, these will change depending on what you've selected on both uh, reports. If you want to change what quarter, so I only want to look at you know the third or fourth quarter, five is obviously overtime, which this game did not get to, but you want to look at the second half, you can do that. If you want to look at first half stats only, you can do that too. And the average yards to go. So for instance, if you want to look at uh, how a team performed just in short yardage, you want to look at how a team performed when they were uh, you know, passing the ball in long yardage to go. You can do that as well, and these things will change. Otherwise, for the most part, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, I'll just walk you through an example here. Let's look at run plays. And one interesting thing to note here is that the Washington Redskins did not run the ball at all on third down. Uh, you can see that the down is skipped there, and there's no, obviously, a, a third down box for the Washington Redskins over here. Uh, their success rate on first down runs was actually pretty good, 75%, gained 4.8 yards per play. But second down, that dropped dramatically down to 33% success rate, and they didn't even run it on third down. So how many third downs overall did they have? If you look here, you can see that they overall had nine third downs. So 100% of their third downs were pass plays. That's going to be very predictable for the defense if you're never getting close enough to the line of scrimmage so that you can and you have confidence in your run game such that you would call a run play on third down. Uh, that helped out the Pittsburgh Steelers defense uh, tremendously in that situation. And then down here we've got the field zone report. So you can see when the Steelers were on offense, where they were on the field, from their own 1 to 20 yard line into the red zone. So you can see that when the Steelers were in the Redskins red zone, they were successful on 86% of their plays. 86%, that's a ridiculous percentage. They scored three touchdowns from inside the red zone. Meanwhile, the Washington Redskins were successful on only 40% of plays inside the Steelers' red zone and only one yard per play. Now, typically, your yards per play will drop in the red zone because you can't get those huge explosive plays, uh, nor can you, you know, obviously, if you're third and goal from the two-yard line, a two-yard gain is, is great. So, you know... Take this with a grain of salt, but one yard, I don't care, even if you are in the red zone, that's pathetic. Um, let's flip to another matchup. This talk about a pathetic matchup. This will show a lot more red here. This other uh, Monday night game, the Rams versus the 49ers. You can see the total and the spread on this game. The Rams are actually favored. And you can see both offenses just ridiculously bad statistics left and right terrible so I don't really need to go into detail here you guys can play around with this uh, table and, and see how you like it but there may be modifications additions to this over time uh, different things that we want to focus on and then highlight but this is definitely an easy way for things to jump out at you in, in terms of efficiencies in terms of performance just by simply you know, dropping down and looking at a particular matchup, it'll be quite easy and apparent to see uh, how a team performed in, in some of these metrics. And then you can look a little bit deeper after you've kind of given the colors over here on the right a quick overview. So I think this is going to be extremely helpful for you.